Welcome to Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Color Me Gone 2 1964 Dodge 300 Super Stock Car. It's a 125 scale AMT kit number 987. It's a skill level 2 kit for the intermediate builders and there's 143 pieces molded in white, chrome, clear, black, uh, vinyl tires and water slide decals. Lindbergh has released a few versions of this model kit in the past and now Round 2 has re-released this kit as an AMT uh, boxing with new box art. Now the moldings are in pretty good shape and the decals have been rendered nicely. The finished dimensions for this kit are eight and a quarter inches long, three inches wide, and two and a quarter inches high. Now the Color Me 2 car was not only built but was also driven by Roger Lenamut, who was a Chrysler Transmission Lab technician and the engine that was in that car was a 426 big block that was able to do the quarter mile in 12 seconds. Gather these parts to assemble the block, the heads, and the uh, valve covers along with the oil pan and attach those two together as an assembly. Then we're going to gather these pieces and uh, before we put those into place we're going to paint this uh, Chrysler engine red and uh, you can take a look here at the engine assembly after we have added the intake manifold and the oil filter which are painted Model Masters uh, uh, engine red and also um, the starter which is painted black. Um, now we've attached that to the left side of the engine and the carburetors are then attached to the manifold. I use the uh, chrome version for uh, my build on this particular car. And now we can paint the uh, engine front and the fan uh, Model Master Chrysler engine red and the distributor is gloss black. The lower radiator hose and belt assembly are flat black and the fan and the alternator are then attached to the belt assembly and the belt assembly is uh, located to the front of the engine. The engine front assembly is attached to the engine assembly and then the lower radiator hose and the distributor cap are attached to the front of the engine too. Now gather up the exhaust uh, sections there. The headers have to be assembled. They're in two halves so uh, assemble those and paint those silver uh, aluminum type color and then uh, the coil uh, is assembled also onto the engine assembly. So here is a copy of the uh, left front engine assembly and uh, you can see where the headers and the accessories go there and also then uh, from the right rear uh, from transmission forward you can see how that assembly goes together. Now get out these uh, two pieces and add the transmission cross member to the chassis there and then paint that gloss black. Now we're going to locate the engine uh, assembly into the chassis uh, and we're going to just leave it in place. At this time don't glue it in quite yet. So gather these pieces and then uh, we'll paint the uh, engine cross member, uh, the front stabilizer, the torsion bars and the uh, left front suspension and right front suspension pieces Model Masters gloss black. Um, there's two different front suspensions that can be used for this kit. The part number 69 is for the normal stock suspension and part number 420 uh, works for either the raised or lower suspension. Both torsion bars are installed onto the chassis assembly and the engine cross member is attached to the chassis assembly and the engine assembly. Then the left and right front suspension pieces can be installed to the chassis assembly and the cross member. Now the front stabilizer is attached to the engine cross member too. This is a close up of the front suspension. Now it is in the raised uh, position because uh, if you turn that around 180 degrees though it's in the lowered position. So be careful how you position that and for the Color Me Gone build it needs to be in the raised suspension section uh, because it facilitated in weight transfer and traction on the uh, super stock car. Okay so pluck these car, uh, parts out of the kit now and uh, we're going to assemble the differential and uh, rear axle section there and then we're going to glue the leaf springs to that and paint those uh, gloss black. 
So we're going to grab these parts out now, the, and then the drive shaft is painted uh, silver before it is attached to the transmission. And the drive shaft support, uh, which is marked in the instructions as part 37, however it is number 60 on the part tree. And it is painted uh, gloss black, and then installed into the chassis assembly. The differential assembly is then installed onto the chassis and attached to the drive shaft. And the rear shocks are painted, uh, well I painted mine red, I guess you could use uh, any favorite shock color for that. And then attach those in between the chassis and the differential. So here are the other parts for the uh, rear suspension, but we didn't use these to raise it or lower it because the uh, Colony Gone 2 used the normal rear suspension. So grab these parts to work on the underhood uh, portions and uh, the radiator cross member is painted gloss white and the radiator is uh, gloss black. Now the upper radiator hose is uh, flat black or a rubber color and then the radiator hose is then attached to the cross member there and the radiator assembly to the chassis. Uh, now the upper radiator hose is then located and attached uh, to the radiator and the engine assembly. The uh, inner fender, fender wells and the uh, firewall are painted gloss black and the master cylinder is attached to the firewall before it gets glued to the chassis assembly. Then the left uh, front inner fender well and the right one are installed uh, between the firewall and the radiator cross member. Now take a look at the final picture here of assembly and see how that's located. Now assemble the front seat halves and glue that into place on the uh, interior floor pan and then uh, paint that uh, insignia red and detail the uh, pedals there, the brake pedal with the uh, gas pedal with uh, some flat black. Now get these parts and assemble the roll bar and then we're going to paint the, um, the metal portions of the roll bar uh, gloss black and then the padding on the roll bars is flat black. So put that together and then we'll uh, I install that into place in the interior and the holes provided. Now locate these uh, parts and uh, this includes the interior wall and the door handles, the armrests and um, we're going to paint the uh, interior walls in uh, red now uh, just like the rest of the interior and then the chrome armrests that get attached to the interior walls uh, were the stock armrests uh, where they would normally go and then the front front door handle uh, and the armrests are attached to the left and right walls and then those are uh, detailed with some tester silver to uh, bring out the highlights and trim there. So grab those parts for the uh, dashboard and uh, we're going to paint the dashboard and the steering wheel insignia red like the rest of the interior and then uh, we're going to detail those uh, items with uh, some silver and some flat black you can see here like where the pedals are and the dashboard cluster uh, has the decals applied to it and those are 42 through 46 and then the gauge cluster um, gets attached to the top of the dashboard and it has decals 47 and 48 uh, applied. Now the steering wheel is then uh, um, detailed also with some silver paint and then it is glued to the dashboard too. Now install the interior walls into place there on the floor and then the dashboard assembly is installed into the right and left uh, interior sections with the holes or the, I should say the slots that are provided there. So now it's time to glue the uh, interior tub into uh, the chassis there and you know it fits pretty uh, naturally so just uh, nestle it into place there and uh, glue it down and uh, it should stay just fine. Now we're going to start working on the body and we're going to take a look for any of the, um, the molding seams and you'll find those on the fronts and rear quarters. Uh, use some fine sandpaper about a six to eight hundred grit then and sand off the entire body and get that ready and, and use a light primer for this one uh, if you're doing the Color Me Gone version because uh, it has a white colored body. So after you've uh, primed the body once the uh, paint has dried on your model, you can detail the trim uh, with a silver marker pen or you can also use uh, some foil applications to uh, make that highlight uh, stand out. And then uh, start on the decals with 
uh, um, the largest ones and plenty of warm water. Uh, I suggest that you use some of the decal setting solutions for this model. Uh, some of the um, contours will need to be conformed to and adhered to. So I would recommend you use some of that too. Um, after they're in position, use some of that uh, setting solution. And then once they're dried, um, you can uh, clear coat the body and seal those uh, decals into place. So now it's time to get those windows together and I actually like to uh, dip those into the uh, future floor polish. It's pledge floor polish actually. And let that wick off and dry and it gives them a clean clear look. Then uh, install the windows into the uh, body with some of that uh, clear part cement or some white glue. So grab the uh, front bumper and the headlights out of the kit there and then uh, we're going to uh, glue the headlights into place on the assembly there with some clear part cement or white glue. And then uh, you could also enhance the look of that uh, by um, adding some um, uh, a black wash into the recesses of the grill. That's a 50-50 mix of paint and thinner and then uh, letting that uh, just will, uh, flow into the recesses and dry. Now, the, um, the bumper assembly then is attached to the body assembly and uh, the inserts uh, were glued into the front bumper uh, earlier. So, put the uh, grill into place and uh, you're all set to go on the front end. Get these parts out for the back end and then uh, you paint the, um, the filler panel there dark blue like the rest of the body stripe and install that on the body. And uh, be careful here so that you don't, uh, you know, mess with the rest of your paint job. Um, if you hadn't uh, glued that body on, then you could just remove it. It's probably easier to install uh, that way. So the tail lights are then detailed with some uh, transparent red, and then they're attached to the uh, rear body insert. Uh, and the rear bumper is attached then. Now you can see that there are some decals there. Uh, if you haven't put those into place, the decal number 10 goes on the, the rear window. Uh, 14 is applied to the trunk and number 20 to the uh, body filler panel and 16 to the rear bumper. Gather up the parts uh, for the hood and the scoop including the hinges here and note that um, the hood has a couple of holes in it that need to be um, fixed uh, into, uh, uh, to provide relief for the carbs there. So go ahead and uh, I used a, um, a pin vise small drill to um, to cut those out and then smooth them out with a, a rat tail file. After that's done you can paint everything uh, uh, gloss white and then the um, the tops of the ray sections on the hood scoop are painted uh, dark blue like the rest of the body stripe there. And then uh, assemble the, the hood scoop uh, in and uh, put that into place and uh, then you can uh, add the hinges to the back of the hood and drop that in into place as well. We'll move on to the wheels now, so we'll gather these parts, and uh, there's no surprises here, uh, but uh, paint the uh, wheels uh, that dark blue color to match the body stripe, and then the brake drums, um, you know, they get painted tester silver, and the rim back is installed into the front tire, and the brake drum is attached to the back of the front rim's backside. So then the wheel retainer is installed in the front of the uh, rim back there, and locks the brake drum into place. Now the front rim uh, is inserted into the front tire and glued to the uh, back uh, of it. So this process is done for the other front tire and then the rear tires are assembled uh, just like the fronts. So I use the uh, rear rim front number 67 uh, from this kit because they look closer to the uh, photos that I found for the actual race car. So the front and the rear tire assemblies are now uh, snapped into place on the chassis spindles there. And if you haven't done it already, uh, decal number 22 goes on the driver's side door window, 24 goes on the left side window, and then 23 on the right side window, and 21 on the passenger side window to kind of finish up the uh, body assembly. So here is the front end of the vehicle all finished up now uh, with a functional hood scoop and as I mentioned you could use a little uh, black wash on that grill to give it some definition. And this is the, uh, the back end of the car uh, and yes it's a quaint old stocker from uh, a bygone era. Uh, so we also have uh, an under chassis look here to see what the uh, finished build looks like when she's all together from that angle. 
As a side note here, the uh, engine bay area, the fender wells, firewall there, on uh, the original uh, actual car, it looks like this is gloss white, um, although the instructions in the kit have you painting it black, um, so it's up to you to uh, investigate and decide which way you want to go there. Well, there you have it. This was a fun build, and it would fit on any collector's shelf and be a head turner. It's also uh, a good subject matter kit for classic car racing, uh, and I would expect that um, you wouldn't have too much trouble with this, although it's a little tricky uh, with painting and the number of decals. So I would uh, recommend it for intermediate builders. Now, there were a few items uh, that we found in there, but uh, overall the body was straight and true. The chassis was not warped. Uh, there was just some minor mold lines to clean off, nothing major. Um, we did find that the, uh, the descriptions didn't always match uh, what was on the box. Uh, the box says it's a Dodge 300, but the instructions call it a Dodge 330. And there were a few part numbers on the instructions that were different uh, from the parts on the trees. Uh, but there was no real issues. Um, the engine bay color, uh, that's another item that you can uh, check into and investigate. But overall, it was an enjoyable kit to build. It went together well, and the detail was pretty darn good for the age of its mold design. So I'd recommend this kit to um, anybody with some uh, building experience who wants a really sharp looking stocker for their shelf. Well, we hope you liked this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can always find us on Facebook and at our website, www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.